Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This morning, are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? How long has it been? Uh, seven months? Seven months, yeah. I think Amen. So. Almost seven months. Amen. Yeah. Somebody say, it is well. It is well. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to thank the praise team very much. God bless you for leading us. At this time, I want to take the opportunity to welcome each and every one of you into the house of the living God. God has been so good. It's good to see your half-beautiful faces. <laughs> Amen. I can only see half, so uh, I, I don't know. The other, I, I can't see the other half. Is that not so? Yes, sir. God bless you. And we want to, also want to welcome our online community. Shall we just give them a shout? Those of you at home, God richly bless you for tuning in. Yes, uh, uh, it's great in here. We are having a lot of fun with the Lord. And we pray that next week you will join us because there is really, really great social distancing in here. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. This is Pentecost International Worship Center, Phoenix District. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, uh, we meet here in Phoenix. This is our central assembly uh, at Apache Junction. We have another assembly on the west side of Phoenix, the West Valley of Phoenix, right in the heart. And then we have one in Tucson, Arizona here also. But then, all the way in Albuquerque, New Mexico, we also have another church there. So if you find yourself in any of these venues, always feel free to worship with us. You will see our website address posted on the screen, and you will see our phone numbers. You can contact us at any time, and we will get in touch with you. But for now, we say welcome. We are so excited that you have joined us online. And those of you who are in here, also God richly bless you. Amen. We shall sing. Ebenezer, the Lord's. Abundant grace, oh, remember what he has done, and give him all the praise. We shall sing, we shall sing, even his the Lord's abundant grace. Oh, remember what He has Oh, and give, give Him all He does. for how far you have brought us through thick through thin through the attack upon our homes upon our lives upon our destinies you have proved yourself faithful we worship you this morning we lift up our voices 
and say our mouths are too small to celebrate you enough but from the core of our beings from the depth of our hearts we say Ebenezer take all the honor take all the glory we say take all the praise for you alone are worthy and you alone are mighty the saints are before you one more time sitting at your feet that you will minister to us in your own awesome way that you will reveal yourself to us that you will intervene in every situation represented in this place and online today daddy god stretch out your powerful hand ebenezer fight our battles for us and win and win and win on our behalf we say take all the glory take all the honor and praise as you minister through us in jesus mighty name we pray amen this morning we want to take our reading from Haggai chapter 2 verse 9 and then we'll go to first samuel chapter 7 we'll read a passage from 1 to 14. Haggai chapter 2 and verse 9, the New King James Version, and 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 1 through 14. I may not finish or I may, I may skip a few things. In Haggai 2 verse 9, the scripture says, The glory of this latter house shall be greater than that of the former, says the Lord. And in this place, I will give peace says the lord of hosts amen and our focus this morning or throughout our 40 day glory first journey has been the glory of this latter house shall be greater and is greater than the glory of the former in first samuel chapter 7 when we start reading from verse 1 the new king james reads then the man of Tajeth Jerim came and took the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadab on the hill and consecrated Eliezer, his son, to keep the ark of the Lord. So it was that the ark remained in Kajath Jerim a long time. It was there 20 years. And all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. Then Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel saying, If you return to the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the foreign gods and the Ashtoreths from among you and prepare your hearts for the Lord and serve him only and he will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. So the children of Israel put away the bars and the Ashtoreths and served the Lord only. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel at Mizpah, and I will pray to the Lord for you. So they gathered together at Mizpah, drew water, poured it out before the Lord, and they fasted that day and said there, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel at Mizpah. Now verse 7. When the Philistines heard that the children of Israel had gathered together at Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard of it, they were afraid of the Philistines. So the children of Israel said to Samuel, Do not cease to cry out to the Lord our God for us, that he may save us from the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it as a burnt offering to the Lord. Then Samuel cried out to the Lord for Israel, and the Lord answered him. Take note. Verse 9, Samuel took a suckling lamb 
and offered it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, verse 10 says, as Saul was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a loud thunder upon the Philistines that day and so consumed them that they were overcome before Israel. Today may God thunder against your enemies in the name of Jesus. May God confuse those that have risen up against you in the mighty name of Jesus. And verse 11 says, And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and drove them back as far as below Beth Car. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen and called its name Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped Somebody say, thus, somebody say, Ebenezer, thus far, the Lord has helped us. Ebenezer, thus far, the Lord... I didn't hear you. Ebenezer, thus far, the Lord has helped us. Verse 13, so the Philistines were subdued. And they did not come anymore into the territory of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines... All the days of Samuel, then the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel, from Ekron to Gath. And Israel recovered its territory from the hands of the Philistines. Also, there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. Amen. This morning, I am speaking on the topic the power of an Ebenezer offering. The power of an Ebenezer offering. You agree with me that today is a very special day in the life of the church here in Phoenix District. For the past six and a half or almost seven months, all our churches have been closed down. In fact, since mid-March, we transitioned fully to online Zoom and phone conferences. And if, by the grace of God, we have started reopening, we are reopening in-person services today, even though under very great restrictions, after being closed for seven months, we ought to give God the glory, we ought to give God the praise, we ought to know that this is a very, very special day. Amen. Also, in the middle of August, we embarked on a 40-day journey, a glory festival, under the theme, Greater Glory for Possessing the Nations. And though it officially ended last Sunday, because... We were going to reopen. We postponed the climax to today. And so today, we are climaxing our glory fest. And also, we are reopening the church. So today, we are doubly excited because we know that the Lord is here with us. Amen. The power of an Ebenezer offering. Now, in the story that we read, it opens up with the return of the Ark of the Covenant back to Israel after it had been captured for seven months. Now, if you remember, when the Ark of Covenant, when the Ark of the Covenant was captured in battle, Seven months ago, the wife of one of the priests, who was called Phineas, was pregnant at that time. And also, the, 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 the high priest was very old at that time. And when they received news 
that Israel had gone to battle against the Philistines and that the ark of God, which represented the glory of God in their midst, had been captured, it was not good news. In fact, this woman was pregnant. The wife of Phineas was pregnant. She immediately went into labor and she gave birth prematurely. But then, as she was dying, they told her, oh, don't worry. You have given birth to a boy. Don't think about, you know, the capture of the ark or whatever or the bad news. You have given birth to a boy. But the statement says that she did not care at all. She made a statement. She said, call my son Ichabod, which means the glory has departed. And so, that was a very, very low point in the life of Israel in their walk with God. How can people be walking with God to the extent that God's presence, God's glory is captured by a foreign enemy? Heaven was not pleased and earth also was not pleased. And so we know that, you know, Israel was now in bondage to the Philistines for over 20 years or more. Why? Because they had departed from the ways of the Lord and that had led to the Ark of the Covenant being captured. The irony is that these were God's people who were created for dominion who were created for victory, who were created for power, for winning all the time. But how is it that at this time, they found themselves walking in defeat? Because they chose not to walk with God. But then, after the ark was carried by the Philistines, they took it into their camp thinking they had won a war. Hallelujah. Brethren, there are sometimes when the enemy thinks he has, he has scored certain goals against us. But then, what happened? God decided to punish the Philistines because they had touched the untouchable. And the scripture lets us know that God afflicted them with sickness, with boils. He destroyed their idols. You know, because they went and put the ark in the temple of their idol. When they came, the next morning the idol had fallen down before the ark. God was fighting for his people. May God fight for you and for me in the mighty name of Jesus. So after seven months of Wahala, that, the, that God had given the Israel, sorry, the, the, the Philistines, what happened? The Philistines decided that they were going to take the ark back. They were going to return it. Nobody forced them. God just fought against them. And they returned of their own will. Now, the Israelites were there when they saw the ark coming. Hallelujah. The glory that had departed was coming back. Hallelujah. You see, and when they saw the ark coming, they began to have a glory festival. They began to rejoice. They began to celebrate. They began to dance. Hallelujah. Because the glory of the Lord had come back. Today, I want to remind you and I that as we have gone through these 40 days of glory fest, there is no way the glory can depart from your home. There is no way the glory can depart from your life. You and I, we have covenanted with God that in this season of glory fest, God's presence will be with us always. Hallelujah. So, as they, were, uh, as they were rejoicing, as they were having a glory fest, their enemies, the Philistines, had them gathering together to celebrate. The Philistines decided that they 
are going to attack the Israelites again to stop them from celebrating their God. Brethren, whenever you have a testimony, a devil rises up to make sure that he will kill your testimony. But I want you to know that season of glory fest, your testimony will not be taken away anymore in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So, so we want you and I to know that because God's presence was with them, the Philistines came to attack them. And when they came to attack them, the scripture lets us know that at that time, they cried to Samuel, Samuel, pray for us. And Samuel prayed for them, gave them some instructions. And then, through the instructions, as they obeyed God, they had victory over the Philistines. Amen. And that victory was not temporary victory, but it was permanent victory. And one of the weapons that gave them the permanent victory is what I call a glory fest Ebenezer offering. Amen. Today you agree with me that the world is under attack by the Philistines of life. The latest Philistine is the COVID-19. He's not the first. The Philistines of life have been attacking the whole world. But the latest is this COVID. But I believe that just as the Israelites use the weapon to counter the Philistines of life, you and I are going to use the weapon of an Ebenezer offering to enforce our victory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Somebody will ask me, Pastor, what do you mean by an Ebenezer offering? Now, an Ebenezer offering I have defined as an offering that secures the supernatural help of God at all times, especially in times of trouble. Hallelujah. An offering that secures the supernatural help of God at all times, but most especially in times of trouble. When we read Psalm 20, Psalms 20, verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Verse 3 says, Remember all thy offerings and accept thy own sacrifice. Take note, the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. I don't have to convince you that even right now, we are living in the day of trouble. There is trouble everywhere. And it is going to take God hearing us every moment for us to navigate the troubles of life in the name of Jesus. It says the name of the God of Jacob fights for you, defend you. May God defend you and I in the name of Jesus. It says remember all your offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. You see, God has a way of, of remembering our offerings so that through those offerings, he is able to fight our battles in the name of Jesus. How do we see this play in the life of Israel in the story that we read? Now, if you remember from 1 Samuel 7, from 7 through 10, the scripture says that when the Philistines heard that Israel was gathering, they dis at Mizpah, they decided, they gathered in full force and went against Israel to go fight against them. And then the children of Israel were really afraid because trouble was everywhere. Today, we can liken this to the virus everywhere, attacking, getting into people's homes, getting into people's cars, getting into people's churches, wherever, just to attack us and to molest our testimony. 
So let people think that there is no God. But I want you and I to know that there is a God in heaven. And he will fight your battles, fight my battles, and we will win. Amen. So when the Philistines gathered against Israel, what did Samuel do? Verse 9 says, Samuel took a suckling lamb and he offered it as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. Hallelujah. So he made an offering to the Lord. A special offering to the Lord. The Philistines were coming. The Philistines had attacked them for over 20 years. They had been enslaved for too long. And now the Philistines were coming again just because they were celebrating the glory returning. And so Samuel said, I know what I will do. He took a suckling lamb, laid it on the altar of the living God, and offered it whole before the Lord. And look at what happened. The scripture says, verse 10, Now, as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a loud voice upon the Philistines and so confused them that, he over, that they were overcome before Israel. So because of that offering, God came down. God thundered against the Philistines. God confused the enemy. May God come down in our means against whatever has risen against us in the name of Jesus. And may you and I be rescued from it in Jesus' mighty name. So we are talking about the power of an Ebenezer offering. We have defined an Ebenezer offering. Now, what power lies in this offering according to scriptures? The first thing we see in an Ebenezer offering is that an Ebenezer offering has the power of remembrance. Somebody say the power of remembrance. Hallelujah. When you give an Ebenezer offering like Israel gave an Ebenezer offering, there is power in that offering to provoke remembrance. It causes God to remember you. Hallelujah. It causes you also to remember God. Because in the midst of the situation, Israel realized, I have no power of my own. I cannot do it by myself. Unless God fights for me. So in their remembrance of God, when they gave the offering, God also remembered them. Hallelujah. And so today I want you and I to know that every Ebenezer offering has the power of remembrance. If you look at the life of Hannah, Hannah was barren for many, many years. She could not give birth. And then she went to Shiloh, where the Ark of the Covenant was in those days. And after everybody was eating and drinking, you know, she refused to eat and she fasted. She went before the altar and she prayed before God. She prayed. She prayed. She prayed. But she did not stop only at prayer. First Samuel chapter 1. Look at verse 11. After Hannah had prayed, what else did she do? First Samuel chapter 1, verse 11. Then she made a vow and said, O oh Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look, with, look on the affliction of your maid servant and remember me hallelujah today if you are going through something ask god to remember you we serve who remembers he said and not forget your handmaid but will give your maid servant a male child now look at what she said then i will give hallelujah i will give him to the lord all the days of his life and no razor will come upon his head. So Hannah gave God an Ebenezer offering. Something that she needed so much. She said, God, give me a child. And I will give that child back to you. And in the eyes.
God considered it done. Even though she had not given birth to the child yet, God knew that yet, as for this woman, in the spirit realm, she has given birth and she has given me the child already. Hallelujah. And because of that, let's see what resulted. First Samuel chapter 1, let's read verse 19. Verse 19 and 20. Verse 19 and 20. Then they arose in the, early, in the morning, early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to their house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew his wife. And the Lord remembered her. Hallelujah. Because there is power in an Ebenezer offering to provoke God's remembrance. And the Bible says that it came in the process of time that Hannah was able to give birth. Amen. Today, may every offering you have lifted up to the Lord provoke remembrance for you, for your children, and for your family in the name of Jesus. The second thing in an Ebenezer offering is that there is power of reversal. So first, power of remembrance, but then an Ebenezer offering has power of reversal, reverse. That means that an Ebenezer offering has power in it to reverse past defeats and convert them to permanent victories. Hallelujah. An Ebenezer offering has power to reverse past defeats and convert them to permanent victories. That means that no matter the defeats you have suffered in your life, there are offerings that you give that provoke heaven to cause reversal of those defeats on your behalf. Hallelujah. And let us see how it happened in the case of Israel in this story. Remember, in verse 12, 1 Samuel 7, that is our main context, 12 and 13, Let's see what happens. He says, Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shen and called its name Ebenezer, which means, thus far, the Lord has helped us. So that means that that offering of the lamb that they gave was still working and brought them victory, brought them help. So Samuel was trying to let them not forget God's help. Sometimes, when God does something for us, at that moment we are excited. He has done it again. We sing and we dance. But the next moment we face another crisis, it is very easy to forget. So Samuel took a stone a huge stone. Stones don't move. Huge stones don't move by themselves. He placed it in a strategic place between Mizpah and Shen. A very popular road where Israel will travel all the time. That whenever they see the immovable stone, they will remember that God is a helper. God is the one who helps to reverse past defeat. And turns them to permanent victories. Hallelujah. So he placed it and called it Ebenezer. So whenever they were passing, Ebenezer, Ebenezer, Ebenezer. So when they were discouraged and they were passing, God will help us again. If he has done it once, he will do it again. Amen. Then look at verse 13. So the Philistines were subdued and they did not come anymore. Somebody say, anymore, anymore, anymore. So the Philistines were what? Were defeated. They did not come anymore into the territory of Israel. Why? He says, the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. Permanent victory. Permanent victory. Now, let me take you back down memory lane in the life of Israel. 
Remember that about 20 years ago, Israel and the Philistines fought. Is that not so? In the first encounter of that battle, when you read the story, First Samuel from chapter 4 going, the scripture says that when Israel went against the Philistines, the Philistines defeated Israel and killed 4,000 people, 4,000 fighting men. So it suffered one defeat. 4,000 men were lost. So what happened? Israel retreated. They went back, they cried. Then they took the Ark of the Covenant. And they said, now the Ark is with us. We are going against the Philistines. We will win. Little did they know that the God we serve is a God who looks at the heart, not at the outside. And God was trying to teach them a lesson at that time. To provoke them to draw them closer. To draw them nearer to himself. So, God was not just going to give them a foolish victory. No. God does not give his children foolish victories when they are misbehaving. Because your destiny is more important than your immediate comfort. Your eternal destiny it's more important than your immediate comfort. God can give you what you want. But if you are going to miss heaven, God says no. Your future is more important to me than your present. So I want you to deal with your present so that your future shall be great. Hallelujah. So after they took the ark, they rejoiced, yay, yay, yay. Then when the Philistines heard, the Philistines said, we are dead. The ark is coming with them. We are dead. He said, Philistines, fight, oh, fight like never before. Fight with all your power. Fight with all your might. So they clashed in battle. Even with the... Israel suffered a second defeat. And in this second defeat, 30,000 Israelites died. That is when uh, 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 Hophni and Phineas also were killed. They were the ones who were misbehaving with women in the temple and all kinds of things. And then in the midst of war, they had the ark. Hey, God, fight for us. These were people who were misbehaving spiritually and thought that God was not a righteous father. And so God said, no, I need to teach you guys a lesson because I'm a good father. Amen. And so after that second defeat, the ark was captured. That is where all the story has unfolded. Now, the ark come back, glory first, rejoicing. The people were now getting hungry for God. The people needed more of God. God had humbled them. And they loved God. They were yearning for God. And the moment... They met with clean hearts to, to, to rejoice with God. The enemy came and God said, no. After Samuel gave the suckling lamb, the Ebenezer offering, God said, no, this has not just provoked remembrance. It is time for reversal. Somebody say it is time for reversal. Every defeat, whether it was your fault or not your fault, May God reverse it in the name of Jesus. Every defeat have suffered. Some of us may have been attacked by the virus, but God fought for us. Some of us may have lost our jobs, but God is fighting for us. So God, you know, some of us, something negative has happened. God is reversing negative destinies. Hallelujah. If your health is still under attack, we are praying for permanent reversal. In the name of Jesus, the power of remembrance and the power of reversal. Hallelujah. The third thing that is inside an Ebenezer offering is the power of restoration. Somebody say restoration. In 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 14, the Bible says, Then... The cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel. 
Hey. The, 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 the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel. I, I, I mean, I'm so excited. The cities which belong to Israel. But the enemy had come to take them. The Bible says what? Were restored. Were restored to Israel. From Ekron to Gath. And it says what? Israel recovered its territory. All its territory from the hands of the Philistines. Restoration. That means what the enemy has stolen. God has a way of restoring it back. Voked by an Ebenezer offering. Today, there are things your offering can do for you that your money can never do for you. This is the mystery of giving as a child of God. This is the mystery of offering as a child of God. There are things God does when we move him with our offering. Hallelujah. Nobody can bribe God. Nobody can pay for healing. Nobody can pay for protection from God. No. God is the richest. But there are some things your offering does. Hallelujah. That your money cannot do for you. And today, may your Ebenezer offering. Hallelujah. May your Ebenezer offering spark restoration for you. Spark remembrance for you. And may it spark reversal for you in the name of Jesus. How do we give an Ebenezer offering? How does a child of God give an Ebenezer offering? <laughs> Number one, remember that in the kingdom of God, giving is a heart issue. Because God looks at the heart. Is that not so? It says, man looks on the outside, but I look at So, an Ebenezer offering starts with a surrendered heart. When you have surrendered your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. A surrendered heart. When we read 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1 through 5, that's for context, 1 to 5. But let's read just verse 5. Just verse 5. 2 Corinthians 8, verse 5 talking of the Macedonian Christians. The Bible says, and they did not do as we expected, the NIV, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then to us in keeping with God's will. They did not do as we expected. They gave themselves first to the Lord. They surrendered Brothers and sisters, look, God wants you first. Hallelujah. We need to surrender. God needs our heart. When God has your heart, God has all of you. If God does not have your heart, he cannot have your home, he cannot have your children, he cannot have your money. But when God has your heart, when our hearts are surrendered, hallelujah, then God has you. The Macedonians gave themselves first. Not to the church first. First to Jesus. And then after that, they gave themselves to the Lord. Today, may we surrender totally to the Lord. And that is why if you have not made Jesus Lord of your life, this is the time when you surrender, you make him Lord. You just open the way for him to move in your situation. The second way we give a, 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 an Ebenezer offering, first is a surrendered heart, second is a sanctified heart. Somebody say a sanctified heart. Now, remember when Samuel was about to, to kill the suckling lamb, in 1 Samuel chapter 7 verse 3, he told them something. You see, he, he, he told them that this offering, before I give it to the Lord, your, there has to be some sanctification. You have to separate yourself. Separation from things that defy. So he said what? First Samuel 7 verse 3. Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel saying, if you return to the Lord with all your heart. So sanctify, come back to the Lord. He says, with all your heart. Then put away idols, foreign gods, 
Ashtoreth, bars from among you. Prepare your hearts for the Lord. Serve him only. And he will deliver you from the Philistines. So what? A sanctified heart. Hallelujah. May you and I sanctify our hearts before him. Because God wants our heart first, not our money. Amen. The third way we give the Nisa offering is a sincere heart also. A sincere heart also. So we have a surrendered heart, a sanctified heart, and now a sincere heart. Sincere heart means what? You are willing. Nobody is forcing you. Nobody is pushing you. Nobody is coercing you. Nobody is twisting your arms. Hallelujah. To be able to give unto the Lord. No. God loves a cheerful giver. Not somebody who twists their face like bitter lemon. Hallelujah. Amen. But somebody who has totally, you know, who is sincere. That is why in Exodus chapter 25, verse 1 to 2, the Lord said to the children of Israel, when they had had their glory first in the wilderness, then he told them to build a tabernacle for him. Exodus 25. He said, the Lord said to Moses, he's saying, verse 2, speak to the children of Israel that they may bring me an offering from everyone who gives it willingly with his heart. You shall take my offering willingly, willingly. And so, as a child of God, we have to learn how to give willing offerings to the Lord. And today, God is going to take a willing offering from your hand in the name of And when you give willingly and with right motives, God blesses you mightily. Hallelujah. Let us read Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. He said, willingly willingly with right motives luke 6 verse 38 says what he says give give and it shall be what given to you you know that is god's standard operating procedure for financial transaction in the kingdom give first willingly and then it shall be given unto you back how good measure pressed down shaking together running over, God will deposit in your bosom. So we can never outgive God at all. Our giving, you know, is for our own benefit. When we give willingly, the Bible says it shall be returned back. How? Not a bad measure. Somebody say a good measure. Pressed down, shaking together, running over. You know, I can never Pass this scripture without remembering my, my days in boarding school. When we were going to boarding school, boarding school was a jungle. Some of you know that. You go and you are there. Before you go, your will load, you know, your chop cans of provisions. And then, you know, uh, um, we had a particular food that was made, you know, of groundnut, you know, uh, uh, groundnut and gary. They mix it together with sugar. You know, and those are the foods like when you are hungry and there is no food, you take it, you eat it, you drink water and you are, uh, it will carry you. Somebody understands boarding, boarding home life? <laughs> Hallelujah. So, when we were about to go and mother, you know, had beaten, you know, the Kenya, we call it Kenya in Sierra Leone, Kenya. So, you know, she had made it bit. We had our containers and we put it in and the container will be filled. We say, no, boarding life is tough. So what do we do? We press the kanya. We press it. We press it and we create more space. Then we load it. Hallelujah. And what else do we do? Press down. Press down. Somebody say, press down. Press down, shaking together, running over. You see, so whenever I read this, I remember my boarding school days when I will press it down and press it down and press it down. 
so that it can take more. Hallelujah. So when we give, God gives back good measure. How? Press down so you can absorb more. Amen. And finally, how should we give? A sacrificial heart. A sacrificial heart. Amen. So we start by giving with what? We give with a surrendered heart. Then we give with a sanctified heart. A sincere heart. Now a sacrificial heart. Sacrificial giving is giving that goes the extra mile. In Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 2, the Bible says, cast your bread upon the waters. After many days you will find it. He said, give a portion to seven. Seven is the number of perfection. Seven you have given and you have given well. But then, the next verse, give a portion to seven. Ecclesiastes 1, uh, 1, 11, 1 and 2. He said, and then to eight. Eight means go the extra mile. Hallelujah. You see, when you go the extra mile, you are able to attract the extra giving also. Amen. The extra receiving also. That is why in 2 Samuel chapter, uh, chapter, tw chapter 24 and verse 24, David says, he said, I will not give anything to the Lord that what? That costs me nothing. He said, I will always go the extra mile. That means that Six, verse 5 and 6 because of our time that's my last verse tonight today he says they that go in tears shall reap how in joy they that sow in tears shall reap in joy and then verse 6 says he that goes forth and weepeth Bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. So he that goes forth weeping, but then bearing precious seed, the king just a precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his harvest with him. What this verse is saying is that sometimes sowing is not easy. You are crying when you are sowing because it is a sowing that goes the extra mile. But the Bible says, shall doubtless, he that goes forth, he said what? Who is that goes forth weeping, bearing precious seed, precious seed, shall doubtless come again rejoicing, bringing his harvest with him. So this means that when you go the extra mile, there is a guarantee. Doubtless come again. Doubtless without any shadow of a doubt. When we are dealing with God, without any shadow of a doubt, when you go the extra mile, God goes the extra mile for you. Hallelujah. Today, may God go the extra mile for you and I. May God go the extra mile for your children as they are going to school in this pandemic. May God go the extra mile for you as we navigate this dangerous atmosphere all around us. May God also go the extra mile for us that the things we are believing Him for that have not manifested, may they manifest in the mighty name of Jesus. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again rejoicing Bring in his sheaves with him. May God bless you. Amen. Shall we be on our feet at this time? Wherever you are, I just want you to thank the Lord for the word that has come forth. I want you to bless the name of the Lord. Give him the glory. Give him the honor. The songwriter says, We shall sing Ebenezer, the Lord's abundant grace that has kept us in the midst of this pandemic. He says what? Remember all he had done. Give him all the praise. Begin to give God the praise. Praise him for your life during this pandemic. You have been going up and down. The virus is all over the place. It has not touched you. 
tell somebody even though the mask is good it is not the mask that saved you hallelujah it is god that has saved you it is god that has covered you it is god that has shielded you and i'm not advocating taking off your mask or what yes we are wise and we are going to keep wearing it but it is god that has covered us hallelujah thank god for his coverage thank god for his protection yes people some have lost their jobs but god by his grace has kept you you still have a job you may have lost your job but still alive hallelujah some have lost their lives it is god who has done it bless the name of the lord father we thank you for today daddy we give you the glory we give you the praise and the worship for you are the god who never fails we thank you we bless you that in this season of ebenezer in this glory first season we will give a glory first is a seed to you that will guarantee remembrance oh god guarantee reversal oh god guarantee restoration begin to bless the name of the lord in jesus mighty name we pray i don't know what you are believing god for we are going to give an opportunity to give an ebenezer glory first offering to the lord after this message after we've lifted our tithe and offering and today i want you to speak as you give your best offering to the lord whatever you are believing god for that has not manifested till now you are asking god to remember you you are asking god to reverse that thing you are asking god to restore you go before the lord at this time and begin to speak over your seed that you are going to sow no matter how big no matter how small no matter how tiny god in heaven will hear you like he heard israel and he will move on your behalf begin to pray speak over your offering speak over your life let god remember you hannah said if you remember your handmaid i have been coming to shiloh for years believing you for a child but today if you remember me i will give this father today lord we lay our lives on our altar god on the altar of the living god daddy god believing and trusting you some of us are trusting you god for our first child for our first job for the completion of our education daddy god today we are coming before you god the lord that as we sow a seed you reveal your mighty hand you reveal your outstretched hand you reveal your powerful hand in the name of jesus daddy god santa baba baba kelebeze renda baba 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 renda baba 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 rebede de biskata boza madabayen de riabro satabaka speak to the lord you are believing god for a spouse you cannot buy a spouse but ye katata baba ka god can remember you hallelujah god can remember your child in college and grant them a scholarship god can remember yes your family and in this pandemic let god continue to remember you and i as we drive to and fro yeah your health may be failing but god is the one who remembers with healing may god remember your health may god remember your health may god remember your health in the name of jesus may god remember your home 
your marriage, your children, your nation. May God remember America in this season of election. May God remember this nation. Papa, we give you glory. Papa, we give you honor. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. We don't want to close this service 